So if you're a filmmaker and you're looking for items to put on your gift list that aren't embarrassingly expensive or you're giving to a filmmaker and you don't want to break the budget, this gift guide is for you. I've got eight items that are all under $50 American that if you've been reading or watching any other gift guides, you've probably never heard of or thought about before, but that any filmmaker would love to have, even if they haven't really heard of it before or thought about it before. So let's get into it with number one, an item that you probably haven't heard of before, and that is black wrap or cinefoil. Black wrap is basically tin foil that is a matte black. Now, why would you pay 40 bucks for a giant roll of black tin foil? So black wrap has three major features. The first is that it's black. This means that it's not gonna be reflecting light all over the set if you put it near a light. So we can use this to block light and not worry about it sending light somewhere else that we don't want to, unlike, unlike normal tin foil, which is very shiny. And secondly, it's metal, which means it's not gonna light on fire, which is really important when you're dealing with really hot lights. Um, I said three things, didn't I? There's actually four because, because it's metal, it's also very shapeable, which means we can put it on a light. It's not gonna reflect the light. It's not gonna light on fire, but we can also put it around and create like a spotlight effect and we can block the light. We can clip it on the light, which leads to the third thing or the fourth thing now that black wrap has going for it is it's extremely light, which means all we need is a C47 to clip it and hold it in place. And a lot of people don't even know it exists. And it can be a little hard to find, but I have linked some in the description below this video and all the things that I'm gonna be talking about today, of course, are also going to be linked in the description below this video so that you can find them easily if you want to. Moving on to number two, we have a light, a small battery powered light. This one is the newer N160, which is a little bit of an older light, which means you can get it at a little bit of a better price. Newer has a newer version of this called the N. 176, I believe, and that refers to how many little LEDs are on this light. This light is actually really impressive. Even though it's a little bit bigger and a little bit bulkier, it puts out a lot of light, especially compared to smaller lights that have a battery built in. This light has really impressed me. This one is pretty cool, not only because it can take a external battery like this, but it also can take double A's, unlike the newer versions of this light, which means that if you're traveling somewhere that doesn't have power or you run out of power on these, you can run down to the gas station, buy a bunch of double A's, pop them in here, and be up and running in no time without having to wait for this to charge or find an outlet or stop your whole production. Now, it doesn't have to be this particular light that you get for somebody. There are a lot of great options under $50 for a little tiny portable light. Having a small light in your kit or in your camera bag to use as an impromptu emergency key light or as a background light or as a kicker or as a fill or as a flashlight when you're looking through your bag in the dark trying to find things. Having a small light on hand is just so valuable. I highly recommend it. Would make a great gift. Any filmmaker will be thrilled to receive a little light that they can just throw in their bag and have in their kit and have on hand. One, two, Three, let's go with these. White balance cards, gray cards. These are great in your filmmaking kit. They just fit in your bag. A tiny set like this that can be just thrown into your camera bag. Everybody should have these on hand. Most people don't. Make a great gift. And are only about 10 bucks. Number four, extra quick release plates. This one is a Manfrotto quick release plate, P200, I believe. This has two parts, a foot, because these get lost and you can't use your tripod if this gets lost. So having extra of these, very useful. Even if you only have one camera, just having extra is very useful. And the shoe part. So if you've got something else, like you've got two brands of tripods, you've got a Monfrotto and another brand. Having this on the other brand all of a sudden makes it so you can swap between the two tripods super fast. Put this on your gimbal, on your monopod, or on your gorillapod, or on your slider, or whatever you want to put it on. Having an extra one of these is great and would make a great gift. These are about 15 bucks. And for number five, pony clips. If you don't have some of these laying around, these things are insanely useful on a film set. There's always something to be clipped, always something to be held down, always something to be attached to something, holding gels or cookies or diffusers or blocking light or holding cinefoil or black wrap, all kinds of stuff, cables, wardrobe. These are crazy useful. You can get large ones like this. This one's six inches long. You can get four inch and 
two inch. These of course can be found at a hardware store and depending whether you're buying them in a pack, you might be paying $10, $20 for a pack or maybe a buck or two for an individual one. And if you're just looking for something to fill in, a bonus on that, you could always just get somebody a pack of C-47s, which are known in the civilian population as clothespins, but a pack of clothespins, just throw it in there. A filmmaker will appreciate that. They're not quite a pony clip, but there's something nostalgic and wonderful about using a C-47. And number six, I have to remember where number six was because it's not on this desk. Number six is right here. This is a Mookie on-camera shotgun microphone. And if you don't have one of these microphones yet, they will change your audio world and it's only $30. And just for example's sake, I'm just gonna take this off so you can hear the difference from the camera audio. All right, so what you're hearing now is just the audio from the camera. This is no longer plugged in. This little microphone will sit on top of your camera and you can use it when you're filming, when you're vlogging, boom it in, close to your subject, use a extension cable like this to run it to your camera. I'm gonna put it back on now because this is just horrible audio. I know it's horrible audio. Okay, bear with me. Okay, I'll let the audio difference there speak for itself. Definitely a great gift. Everybody can use another microphone. All right, moving along to number seven, which is actually three items. The Master Shots book series. One of the problems with buying books for a filmmaker is that there is such a variety of experience levels. And oftentimes you're gonna find that either a book is way too complicated for somebody who's just getting into it or way, way, way too basic for somebody who's been doing video for a while. These books are not like that. These are amazing books. Basically in these books, the author is breaking down scenes from movies and extrapolating what can be learned about camera movement, camera placement, lens choices, all that kind of stuff for telling stories. And I think this will transcend from a beginner to somebody who's very experienced in filmmaking will find this very interesting. And he breaks down fight scenes, chase scenes, entrances and exits, dramatic shifts, car scenes, dialogue scenes, arguments and conflict, all that kind of stuff in here, and how to communicate that effectively with your camera placement, your camera movement, and your lens choices. So basically you've got a synopsis where it's breaking down what's happening, why it's happening, and what can be learned from that. And then on the flip side, we've got actual cutscenes from some Hollywood movie, and then, a, and then an illustration of how the scene was created from more of a bird's eye view. I highly recommend this book series as a gift. Each of those books can be found on Amazon for about 20 bucks. Shoot Like Spielberg. This little book analyzes and breaks down key moments in Spielberg's uh, famous movies and analyzes why Spielberg did what he did. If you've watched my video on how to watch movies, that's what he's doing in here. And this book is a great way to see how you can really pull apart a scene just in one aspect. He's just focusing on the cinematography and action in this book. It's very interesting if you're into film and if you're into video to understand what Spielberg was doing and why it worked so well. I think any filmmaker would enjoy this book. About $12 on Amazon. And if you would like even more ideas, I have made a gift guide for photographers, which I will link right here. As you know, photography and videography have a lot of crossover, so you'll probably get some good ideas there. I would love to see you when you click that link.